Good morning everyone, I am Dr. Divyashri, Medical Director, Genia Fertility Center. In the previous video, I had spoken to you regarding the indications for IVF. And today, I will be talking to you regarding how an IVF procedure is done. Most of you would have been advised you require IVF. But you will have a lot of doubts. What is this IVF? Is it a procedure which requires a lot of interventions? Does it require a lot of injections? Does it require bed rest? These are the doubts which you will be having in mind. So let us understand what is IVF. During IVF, we know we take out the eggs outside from a woman's body. We fertilize it with the sperms. So this is called as in vitro fertilization. For this procedure to begin, it usually starts from second day of a woman's menstrual cycle. Second or third day during which the scan will be done, certain blood investigations can be done. And after that, the doctor will decide on the dosage of injection. That is what is the units that you require for stimulation. In this, in this procedure, you require minimum 8 to maximum 12 days of injections which will be given every day. So when we are giving you injections every day, why do we give this? Every woman will ovulate or she releases single egg in her menstrual cycle but we will not be able to manage the whole IVF with a single egg. So we require more eggs. To get more eggs, we give you injections so that we get many number of eggs which could be 5 to 15 or even at times very rarely 20. So for us to understand how you are responding to injections, we need to monitor you frequently which could be once in 4 days, 5 days, 3 days, 2 days depending on your response. So when we give you injections, after like 4 to 5 days we do a scan and also sometimes a blood test to see how you are responding. Everyday injections and once in 3, 4, 5 days scans will be done. It will be correlated with blood tests to understand whether the injections what we are giving is adequate or not. As I told you previously, after 8 to 12 days of injections, we give a final injection called HCG trigger that is for the maturation of the eggs. Once we give the HCG trigger, the egg pickup procedure will be done after 35 hours. So usually the HCG injections will be in the night and after 35 hours the egg pickup procedure is done. Most of you would have the doubt how the eggs can be retrieved outside. It is a simple procedure where it is just like a transvaginal scan. You all have understood the transvaginal probe which is inserted into the vagina and to the same probe a needle will be inserted which will enter through the follicles in the ovary and the follicular fluid is aspirated into the test tube. Along with the follicular fluid, egg also will get into the test tube. Once these eggs come out, we get this in the lab that is the embryology lab and we assess them under the microscope. Usually there are two types of IVF. One is in vitro fertilization, the other one is ICSI. In in vitro fertilization, we leave the egg and sperms together and the sperm has to fertilize the egg on its own. But in ICSI procedure that is called as intracytoplasmic sperm injection, we fertilize each egg with a sperm. So during ICSI what we do, we stabilize the egg with one needle and we insert the sperm through the other needle. Once the procedure is done, that is post ICSI, we assess these embryos after 12 hours, 18 hours depending on the protocols and we assess whether the single egg and sperm they have met each other and it has resulted in a zygote or an embryo. After that, on day 2, it will be a 4 cell embryo which means a single cell gets divided into 2, 2 becomes 4 cell and on day 3, it becomes 8 cell. On 4th day, it is a compaction embryo and on 5th day, it is a blastocyst. So once the egg pickup procedure is done, we do either an IVF or ICSI and then observe these embryos for a minimum of 3 to 5 days. During this uh, monitoring of IVF, as I told you, we would have done scans, we would have done blood tests. If all the parameters are under control, which means you have given less than 15 number of eggs, which means you have not hyperstimulated, your hormone parameters are under control and your lining or the uterus uh, endometrium is also good. If all the parameters are good, we can plan for a fresh embryo transfer, which means after the egg pickup, then Post egg pickup, 3 to 5 days, we can go ahead with embryo transfer provided all these parameters are under control. 
If any of these parameters are not under control or if you have given too many eggs and you are at risk for ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome which means you get too many eggs and you could have bloating in your tummy or there could be even fluid accumulation in the tummy. In those cases, we will not do a fresh embryo transfer. In that case, we freeze these embryos either on third day that is at 8th cell or on fifth day that is at the blastocyst stage and take you for embryo transfer in the subsequent cycle. It could be either in a natural cycle or a hormone replacement therapy cycle wherein we give you medications for the lining to develop. So if at all we are doing a fresh embryo transfer which means after the egg pickup within 2-3 to three to 5 days we are doing the embryo transfer, we will be planning for an embryo transfer and if you ask me what how the embryo transfer would be like. If you have gone through an IUI procedure, it is similar to that. In intrauterine insemination of IUI procedure, we insert semen or the processed semen sample into the uterine cavity. But here, we insert the formed embryos, which could be one or two in number. One or two embryos will be transferred and after the embryo transfer, after 14 days, we get to know the result of beta HCG, whether it is positive or negative. And as I told you, if you are not planning for a fresh embryo transfer, we go ahead, go ahead with frozen embryo transfer, in which case we prepare the lining either by hormones or it could be even a natural cycle and do the embryo transfer when the lining or the uterine lining is good. So this is frozen embryo transfer. You have understood about the procedure of IVF. You also have you know, uh, would have doubts or apprehensions on what could be the success. IVF is a costly procedure. Do we get success in all cases is what is your next doubt. For that, the answer is IVF success depends on your indication. We do uh, IVF for various reasons. If it is a tubal factor in fertility, it is just the tubes which are hampered and the egg and sperm quality is very good. That gives the highest success rates. Wherein the egg and sperm are good especially those patients who, are, who have proven fertility which means they have delivered once after that the tube has got damaged in those cases the probability of pregnancy is highest if it is compromised egg or compromised sperm resulting in a compromised embryo quality then the probability of pregnancy could be poor also if the egg numbers are less then also the and if everything is good, for example, if the egg quality is good, if the sperm quality is good, resulting in a very good quality embryo, then the probability of pregnancy is 50%. Usually, the standard uh, uh, success rate across the world is anywhere between 40 to 60%. On an average, it is 50% in one embryo transfer. As I told you, when we transfer the embryos, we transfer one or two embryos. But what do we do with the remaining embryos? We will be retrieving 5 to maximum 15 eggs. What do we do with the remaining embryos? Those embryos can be frozen, which means they are frozen at minus 196 degrees centigrade. If the first embryo transfer attempt is successful, then you can use these frozen embryos for the second pregnancy as well. But as I told you, if the probability of pregnancy is just 50% and you fail to conceive in the first attempt, we need not have to panic because we still have good number of embryos which are frozen and we can attempt at embryo transfer with the remaining embryos. So what is the probability of pregnancy with the second embryo transfer? It is approximately 75%. What if you fail in the second attempt also? If you have good number of embryos which are remaining, you can even attempt for the third embryo transfer in which the probability of pregnancy is 87.5%. So overall the probability of pregnancy or what we call is cumulative pregnancy is approximately 87.5 or approximately 90% provided the embryo quality is good and we have got surplus embryos. So this is about what is IVF and what is the success stories with IVF. For more details, you can contact us on 636072815. Bye.